Hey, what's up guys? Charlie here. Welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I'm currently transmitting science here from the mobile processing lab on Minmus because I want to gather as much last minute science as possible. I've been trying to figure out whether or not it's even possible for me to send all the things I want to send to, uh, to Duna. And there's some parts that I'm missing that are just essential for this. So I'm making my rounds here trying to see how much science can I actually get. And I get to the moon, or my mobile processing lab here on the moon, and I noticed that I'm actually not generating any science at all. Zero per day. I'm going, what the heck is up with that? Well, my scientist is stuck in the, is actually in the cupola module and not the mobile processing lab. And she has been for, um, well, a few days. Uh, I don't really know. Probably since the beginning of time. I don't really know. So uh, once I took the scientist out of the mobile processing lab and went to the lander with him, at that point, I stopped generating science, and it's just like, I totally didn't even know that. Don't, didn't know what happened, so. But then I thought, you know, there's this lander, and the lander's got fuel in it now, so let's, I should probably get done with that. So I went ahead and I looked at the last minute science facilities, or well, facilities, last minute science that I could get, and then I said, okay, let's, let's finish our lander mission right now, because that's gonna get us a bunch of science, so. I went ahead and I went to the poles, which as you can see was not very far at all. Of course, I start driving like an idiot, looking at the uh, craft itself instead of the nav ball. Awesome, let's waste some more monopropellant. Uh, but I ended up uh, you know, going to the poles just fine, we land just fine, and uh, I end up doing all sorts of science. And the whole goal, of course, is to get as much science as possible so that I can unlock Things like the docking ports that I need, I can unlock um, you know, the, the different buildings that I would like to bring with me, the remote guidance unit, all of these things. I need to be able to bring them. So I go ahead and I do all the science possible here. I plant my flags and I mark them just like I normally do. And then I plot a course for the Midland Craters because the Midland Craters uh, is just the next biome I decide to go to. I, we go to the Midland Craters, or the Midland Craters, yep, and then the Midlands, which is where the mobile processing lab is sitting. So I get myself in position there and, uh, you know, kill all that lateral velocity this way. Of course, this is all sped up like, I don't know, I don't, each of these clips is sped up a different amount um, just to kind of make it fluid. I didn't want some, you know, depending on how much I move the camera um, will determine how much I speed it up. So if it's a relatively stationary shot and I don't move the camera very much, I speed it up a little bit more. If I have a lot of jittering, um, a lot of moving around, which is something I tend to do, it's, I don't know if it's necessarily a bad habit, but it is a habit. To, um, then I slow it down a little less just so it's not like giving everyone whiplash as I'm <laughs> watching it. Uh, but this one is like 600% or something like that. So there's a lot of time that took, this whole mission took about two hours to complete. And this whole video, as you can see by the timestamp, is only about 20 minutes. Uh, at least I'm trying to keep it to be about 20 minutes. Uh, I, I like the, the time-lapse videos, guys. They take a lot longer, like a lot more of my time goes into these time-lapse videos and these post-commentary videos. Because, I, I, I mean, you can see, at least I think you can, the production quality is pretty good. Voice quality and editing and cutting and pacing, they're pretty good. But... Um, it takes an enormous amount of time in comparison to uh, the real-time videos. So there's that. Uh, now I slowed this down because I wanted you to see that the solar panels on the mobile processing lab up, up at the top of the screen are on. You can tell. The, the, the solar panels are definitely there. They're both extended out like, you know, two big flat arms, uh, you know, trying to give my, my lander a great big hug. And um, I want you to see that because something really strange happens here. I'm on EVA, I'm gonna head over to the mobile processing lab and watch this. Look at that. The solar panel, let's slow it down and, and replay this. The solar panel just decides to fly off for no particular reason that I can figure out. And I was like, are you kidding me? What in the world is that? Every time I get near this craft, every time I, I get near the mobile processing lab or really anything that is like fragile on the surface, uh, <laughs> and I tumble myself, um, every time I ha that happens, like it, it, something breaks or something moves in this thing, it's weird. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna take the scientist from the lander and I'm actually going to have that scientist stay in the mobile processing lab because now we're generating 10 per day, which is awesome. So Valentina, our pilot, is going to go home all by herself, but she has well, she has way more Delta V than she needs to get home. 
uh, like 2,900 or something, I can't, is what it says, 2,500. And so I go the wrong way, I have to turn around and go the other way. So I did waste a little bit of fuel here, but I decide that I want to try and hit one more biome on the way home. Of course, it's not really on the way, because as soon as I land, I just have to get up in the air and get all my momentum over again. So there's really no difference between heading this direction, to, you know, heading to the east on my way home, or heading to the west or the north or whatever. Um, but I decide that the Twin Craters is someplace I haven't been yet. And so in this flight, I decide to go to the Poles, the Midland Craters, the Midlands, and then at the end, I grab Science from the Twin Craters. And this was actually, um, you know, it, it, it worked out really well, just like any other landing, but it was a little difficult uh, because I was distracted by a ton of stuff happening in my house at the time, and I almost lost this. I almost didn't decelerate fast enough. And you can, you can see there at the very end, there was a little bit more lateral velocity. Of course, this is sped up, so you really don't have a good grasp as exactly how fast I was falling, but uh, I that burn was just in the nick of time. So it, there's that. So I do all the experiments. Of course, I won't be able to reset any of the non-reusable experiments because I don't have a scientist anymore, but this is the last biome I'm going to be, be visiting. So I don't need to reset the goo canisters. I don't need to reset uh, the observations bay or the, the materials bay. Um, so I, I can basically just do those experiments once like I normally would and then head out to orbit. So there I am. I'm in orbit. I have 700 and something uh, meters per second left. It's no big deal. Plenty of plenty left to get myself back home. So a little bit of time acceleration here and I want to correct my orbit just a little bit here. I'm, I'm actually burning at somewhat of an angle just to make sure that I can kind of get it a little bit better suited for going to Kerbin at the angle that I'd like, which is, uh, as you can see on the screen there with that quick maneuver node. Um, yeah, I want to enter into Kerbin's atmosphere to aerobrake because I'm not sure how much fuel I'll have left. I know I have plenty left, but I need enough fuel to bring the apoapsis later down to a respectable speed for re-entry. And uh, I, don't, I won't have enough uh, fuel all by itself to do that. So I do want to have a little bit of an aerobrake. I really like the the legs that we had on this lander, the, the the robotic legs as they collapsed there back in the I don't know like ten seconds ten seconds ago. I do really like that configuration. I know it's a little bit tedious and it's a little bit more work because I have to like use robotics instead of just hitting a hotkey for it. And I could probably set it as a hotkey. I haven't really researched that whether or not I can use infernal robotics with a hotkey. I might look into that. I don't think it's possible only because there's really no interface other than the one that's built into Infernal Robotics uh, to manage that stuff. So maybe that's not possible, but either way, I arrow break here and I am going to burn the engines a bit and actually take care of and eliminate the rest of my fuel in this burn. Um, while I'm in the atmosphere and while I'm sort of getting hot because I like I said I need to bring the apoapsis down uh, so that I have a respectable speed for re-entry and um, as I move my way around the planet I'm noticing that I'm not really quite deep enough to do this as I need to do it I am I don't have nearly enough fuel left to really bring the apoapsis down how I want and uh, so I burn off the rest of the fuel, and I'm, I'm actually burning monopropellant, but I wait. I say, wait a minute, let's not burn the rest of this monopropellant. Actually, let's transfer it from the canister that I'm not going to be able to keep and transfer it into the command pods so that I have some left over. Then we're just going to go ahead and burn off the rest that's in that canister because we don't need it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eject it anyway, so I don't need it. So uh, I set up my uh, flight computer here to like, just I, I just, basically I set up a node right before we get to the planet, uh, but I don't do anything with that node. It's still going to be basically nothing, but I set the node up so that when I do time acceleration, um, basically the flight computer will stop me. So I don't time accelerate too far. Um, it's something that I'm going to try and do more often now because I have a habit of time accelerating way too quickly. So I'm going to be making just kind of a dummy maneuver and then having that be you know into the flight computer and then when i go ahead and i time accelerate the flight computer will slow me down so i don't overshoot and then i can just eliminate the node i won't need to burn it i can just eliminate it uh, so i went ahead and i decoupled that huge stage that's a lot of money i could have recovered but i'm not really going to be able to do anything with it and i'm certainly not going to be able to get home if i do so i get rid of it and it's just me and this command pod now and I have all the monopropellant that I transferred from the big tank. And so what I'm going to do here, 
because I'm not deep enough into the atmosphere to get um, really the results I'm looking for for these aero brakes, I've decided I'm going to use the monopropellant uh, while I'm now a lot lighter and I'm just a command pod, I'm going to use the monopropellant here to do a retrograde burn with it and uh, really bring my uh, periapsis in deeper into the atmosphere so that I can get a much more effective aero brake. And so that's pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm just going to get my, there it goes, yeah. I don't need I don't need to necessarily burn the entire maneuver that I planned. I'm only concerned with where my periapsis is. And I noticed that my periapsis is, uh, well, I think I noticed, anyway, I'm gonna check it, there it goes. You can see the periapsis is moving, and it's moving outward. Uh, but it's also at 44, and I'm not really, I'm not really sure exactly what the proper altitude is for a proper aero break here. But you can see the, there's another elliptical circle, if you will, or another ellipsis. Um, that's kind of there, that white area. And that's moving every time I bump the uh, monopropellants. It's just kind of showing me where this is going to end up being. And once I have a red X, I know that I'm actually going to be scheduled to land. And I'm not sure I want to land on this pass. So I kind of bump it out a little bit more just to make sure I'm not going to land this pass. But as you will see as time goes on in this video, I am actually going to land this pass anyway because the trajectories mod is not taking into account everything it needs to to give me that properly and so what will end up happening here is well i'll burn a whole lot of ablator but my apoapsis is going to fall much faster than i thought it was and i'm going to end up re-entering the atmosphere and uh, staying there this time anyway of course, we have plenty of life support. I could have circled around the planet numerous times. Uh, I have plenty of life support on the top of this capsule, uh, and as well as retractable uh, solar panels, so I'll never run out of electricity, I'll never run out of life support. But once I notice that I am actually not going to be going back to space, I decide to burn off the rest of this monopropellant anyway, just to slow me down as much as possible there. And I see that my trajectory takes me in the middle of the water, which is, I think, the best possible outcome, really. I mean. If you're if you're not if you're not planning to fully go into the atmosphere and stay there, if you're not planning to land and in a pass, and all of a sudden you just kind of realize, oh yeah, I'm gonna land. Well, then it's probably best that you do it in the water instead of someplace like the mountains. So when this flight is all over with, and when we end up entering and I, I land on the water, I actually have uh, once again, like I kind of normally do, I mix and match things. I actually have um, some in the moment commentary to share with you as far as our research goes. I do have tonsillitis, uh, at least at the time of recording this, so my voice is not anything like what you hear now. But um, it is some pretty good sort of, it's kind of a good ending to the video, so I'll let myself in the moment take it from here. Thanks. Oh yeah, okay, so uh, 2,829 science now pretty good uh, 1.5 million funds and Valentina we got her back she's available for any mission we want her for now which is pretty good 2829 is the science so let's see what we can unlock with that I know that I want uh, long-term science tech for the laboratory, but that's not the thing that is most urgently needed. I need this docking port to do anything with bases. So this is automatic, we're gonna grab that. Now I can get large probes if I want to. This gives me the RCL01 remote guidance unit. This is what is required for us to have no signal delay. Um, you know, a little bit later. I don't necessarily need it right away. And all of our stuff that we have going out to Duna right now can, I'm perfectly content with the signal delay. I won't have, you know, six Kerbals and have a fully functional base in time for this, this loop around the solar system anyway. So I'm gonna put this one off because I don't, at least not right now. Um, I think having better solar tech is a good idea for some stations and stuff that we're gonna be doing. So uh, this one here does 55 a second. Very cool. Uh, so I'm gonna grab this. Now this says it cannot be retracted. Panels cannot be retracted. These must be really big then. 
Uh, largest solar array available. It's large and unwieldy, but if you can get past all that, it's packed with loads of advanced solar cells. Okay, we'll grab that, because I think that's good for stations. Um, what else can we get here? Now, this one here does 100 per second. Blanket. 500 per second. Whoa. Wow. Uh, you said that they were the best available, but these ones, <laughs> I guess they just keep advancing their tech. Okay. Logistics is important. We need to get that. Uh, advanced logistics. Is that really necessary right now? I'm not so sure that it is. Although having the garage door... K&K well, &K garage with side door. Hmm. That's interesting. Garage structure. Garage front. Garage cover. Garage adapter. Modular six times storage. Okay. This might be something handy to have. It is 1500 We don't have enough to buy it. So, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna take long-term science tech so that I can have the laboratory and have the solar particle collector, which is another experiment. And then I can grab experimental science after that. That has the narrowband scanner, although I'm not really sure how useful the narrowband scanner is now that we have um, ScanSat installed, but you know, it is what it is. So I think I'm gonna grab long-term science tech. That's gonna open up, uh, what is this? Scientific Outposts, which has no parts in it. High Energy Science has no parts. Ultra High Energy Physics has no parts. So that's it for the long-term science tree. Experimental Science will open up Advanced Off-World Mining, which is kind of cool. Jaw. I don't know what these parts are. That's kind of cool. Um, k, k Planetary ISRU, that's cool. And then Resource Exploitation after that gives us the mass driver. So yeah, 429 science left. Not sure what to unlock with that. I'm thinking these hinges might be pretty useful for some stuff that I wanna build. These hinges might be nice. Advanced Metalworks might be cool. Gives us the corridor docking port, the base separator. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to be useful for, to be honest. Shielded docking ports, radial mounted stuff here. It gives us This gives us the 3.75 meter heat shield. Um, where is the 10 meter heat shield? Do I even have that unlocked yet? There's the Meerkat landing assist. That might be handy for our bases. Well, anyway, that's what I've got unlocked here. So I, I think with that... We have the parts and I have the components that I need now. Um, aside from large probes, I can send everything that I want to send to Duna for a base. I can send all of the structures that I need uh, and get them at least into orbit um, and get them prepared to land, except for the central hub. That's the only part that I, I, I can't send, which is okay because that's the part I want to land first. It's the central point. Um, so... Yeah, that's what we're going to do here next. So I think the next video is going to be sending our, our trying to get our, our base structures. You kind of saw me playing around. So yeah, I'm recording this before I've uploaded that one. So I don't know your feedback yet, but I will be doing, I will, re, I will be recording the next video after seeing your feedback on that one. So hopefully there's some good feedback there and I can uh, use it to make the base even better and uh, hopefully put some ideas together to package it all up nice and neat and prepare it to get to Duna, land in Duna safely, get all the components landed safely, and also have the, um, I guess, the ability to move all the stuff around once it's on the ground. So anyways, thanks for watching. See you, bye.